for December 20th, 2020, I want to talk about US-based electric car manufacturer Tesla and its head, Elon Musk. And this is in response to a comment that I saw under my SpaceX video, SpaceX being a US-based aerospace company, also headed by Elon Musk. Now let's just let's just read the comment first and then we'll go from there. Musk was ecstatic about the coup in Bolivia that overthrew the democratically elected government and was going to give sweetheart lithium deals to multinational corporations, thus stealing from the Bolivian people. I am skeptical of Musk's humanitarian instincts. Now, this is referring to large amounts of lithium that have been found in Bolivia and the fact that Elon Musk and his company Tesla need lithium to make the, the batteries for their electric cars. So, this last part right here, I totally agree with that. I'm skeptical of Musk's humanitarian instincts. We should always be skeptical of people who have large amounts of wealth and influence, because even if they're doing good now, that could always change. And part of checks and balances is constant vigilance. So we shouldn't give a free pass to anybody. Uh, and the more money and power that they have, the more careful we have to be about um, their impact on society. But the, the rest of this, I, you know, I really wasn't sure what they were talking about. So I did some research and I saw this Twitter exchange. And, and Elon Musk has a terrible history of, of saying inappropriate things on Twitter and making problems for himself when, you know, he'll say something that, you know, if he, he it's not true, he's trolling people, he's provoking people, but it just creates extra problems for himself. So he's talking about a government stimulus package and this person just kind of butts in with a totally unrelated accusation. And they, they claim the US government organized a coup against Evo Morales in Bolivia so that Elon Musk could obtain the lithium there. This is a checkmarked person here and they didn't put a link or anything in to substantiate that accusation. That's a pretty serious accusation. And then Elon Musk responds, we will coup whoever we want, deal with it. So this person starts by trolling Elon Musk and then it really does look like he's just trolling them back. But at face value, it kind of looks like he's supporting US interventionism because of course the US definitely was involved in uh, overthrowing the Bolivian government in 2019. And even Evo Morales cites this comment by Elon Musk at face value as evidence that the U.S. is after the country for its resources. And you cannot blame him for that. You could only blame Elon Musk for saying something irresponsible. Now, what Elon Musk should have responded with was where Tesla gets its lithium from right now and where it plans to get it from in the future. Because if he did that, and that's what I researched today, if he did that, this person would look foolish and extremely ill-informed, if not dishonest. And this issue would have been settled. And the people who follow Elon Musk would have learned something new about Tesla, perhaps, if they didn't already know where it gets its lithium from. But one thing I wanna kinda of point out is the US didn't wake up one day you know, in 2019 and decide to overthrow the Bolivian government for lithium. Uh, this article here, Bolivian coup reflects long history of U.S. intervention in Latin America. And they're talking about how for decades the U.S. has been doing this. And for Bolivia in particular, they're talking about the 1940s and 50s and 60s. This is decades before Elon Musk was even born. That's how long they've been going at this. But that's not to say that the U.S. was already, you know, working on hegemony over Latin America and Elon Musk and Tesla saw the lithium and decided to get behind it for this added incentive of taking this resource. So I looked for evidence of, you know, some kind of link between Tesla and the lithium in Bolivia. And I found Telesor, which I, I generally have a good opinion of. And I thought, well, if anyone has information, it'll be Telesor. And they say Elon Musk confesses to lithium coup in Bolivia. And, um, you know, this tweet I don't really think is a confession. It's it's Elon Musk being Elon Musk. He, he, can't, he can't, you know, he can't blame people for attacking him over this. He did it to himself. But that's not really a confession that he was somehow involved in the coup. Now, the article mentions that Bolivia has a lot of lithium. True. And that Tesla's you know, cars need batteries that use lithium. True. 
but I don't see any evidence here connecting Tesla to Bolivia's lithium. And, and this part right here is where it all starts to fall apart. They're talking about a letter from the coup regime's foreign minister, the, you know, the US-backed client regime's foreign minister, sent a letter to Elon Musk dated March 31st. Now, this whole article is from the year 2020, this year. And so I'm assuming that this is March 31st, 2020. And it says, any, and I think they meant cooperation, any cooperation that you or your company can provide to our country will be gratefully welcomed. Now, if Tesla and Elon Musk helped orchestrate the coup specifically to get at the lithium, why would the foreign minister be sending this letter to Elon Musk, reaching out to him and Tesla? It doesn't make any sense. If anything, it's evidence that Tesla didn't care at all about Bolivia's lithium and the U.S. client regime was looking for anyone to reach out to, to, you know, get something going in the country. So there's that. And then I was wondering, you know, where does Tesla get its lithium from? They already have suppliers, you know, sending them lithium from China, from Australia. Um, this company is headquartered in Canada, but Pure Energy Minerals, I do believe, gets their lithium from Nevada, where the Tesla Gigafactory that makes batteries is located. And then this one, uh, I do believe these two companies are getting their lithium from northern Mexico. Bolivia is not mentioned here at all. Um, not in their current uh, sourcing of lithium and not regarding plans to source it in the future. As a matter of fact, Tesla's plans for sourcing lithium in the future involve Nevada, where there already is lithium. They have a process that they want to use to source it there themselves, vertically integrate it into the battery production process and so that they don't have to depend on other companies inside the U.S. or abroad. Then they can avoid, you know, disruptions in supply chains, price fluctuations. They have total control over that. That'll help stabilize prices and also drive prices down. So that's their plan that they're working on for the long term. And the last thing that I want to point out is I was wondering, you know, there's lithium in Bolivia, but how accessible is it? Is it something that they're already extracting and processing and making available? for trade with other countries or companies. And all I could find was Evo Morales making a deal with a German company where they actually have started extracting and processing lithium, but, but not in very large amounts, not, not enough that, that would be relevant to what Tesla is trying to do. And for Tesla to use Bolivia's lithium, they would have to first invest in infrastructure to extract and process much more of it which would also be a very long-term plan. And there's no evidence that Tesla is interested in even doing that. The only evidence that we have is them working on this Nevada plan. So let's go back to the original comment here. And we could see that, uh, you know, Musk was uh, making a comment in bad taste. He, he was most likely trolling that other person. Um, the idea that the coup was about lithium seeing how the U.S. has been trying to control Bolivia since the 1940s is also highly suspect. It doesn't mean that if there is lithium in Bolivia and the U.S. has a, a stable client regime in there, that that's not something they would also exploit and extract at the cost of the Bolivian people. I don't mean that. I just mean it wasn't the, the reason they did it. And as far as being skeptical of, of Musk's humanitarian instincts, I think that's a fair statement to make. So anyway, I hope this video helped people kind of separate, you know, uh, you know, avoid hero worship, but also, you know, across the board vilification. When an issue like this pops up, just try to find the facts. Um, dig in a little bit. You'll learn a lot and you'll you'll see how things aren't as simple as they seem. You'll you'll see how a lot of misconceptions come about and you'll learn a process on how to break through them. And I think that's important to do because, you know, reliable information is how we're going to solve problems. And if we have if we have an an idea of how things work that's not accurate, that's not based in facts, it's gonna make it more difficult to solve problems that, that we all face. So for my patrons that make these videos possible, thank you so much. Um, 
keep the comments and feedback coming. If you're watching this when I posted it publicly, please think about liking and sharing the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's totally free and it helps the channel grow and I greatly appreciate that. Check the video description below for the links to all these articles that I was just showing you. So there's a lot of info, you know, there's a lot of interesting information there and also ways that you can help support my work like my Patreon account where not only are you able to contribute monthly to help support my work, you also get extra content and benefits in return. And to everyone who has been helping me in absolutely every way, even if you're just sharing my work with other people, thank you so much and thank you for watching.